once again we are here and it is the official program the program has just started the biggest real estate event in africa under the offices of grepa and we are fortunate to have Rabo frida prempe with us and uh, she did the official opening of the event and as the official media partners of the event we'd like to have a word with the honorable good morning welcome Thank you. Good to see you. Yes. How is it like to be the one to open such an event? It's always a privilege and honor to associate myself with the housing industry. So anything housing, you always find me when the opportunity avails itself. And uh, what would you say this mean to the housing sector, especially you being in charge of the housing sector in the country? Well, I think that Grepa has done a great job. And in that part of the world, you know, Ghanaians are so used to the agency system. We've passed the real estate agency bill. But so we have some people within the system that they think that they can use themselves as middlemen. But Grepa has always been there to propagate the issues affecting the housing industry. And this year's um, conference, under the theme, an opportunity to innovate and optimize, I think they couldn't have chosen any other theme than this one. Because we are looking at alternative um, building materials. We are looking at alternative technology. We are looking at how we can bring down the cost of building. We are looking at other alternatives. How do we also optimize what we have available to us? Our resources available to us? How do we add value to what we have? How do we propagate the issue about the agency? In, in, in America, for instance, you can buy a house, you can't rent a house without going to any realtor. But in Ghana, it's, a, it's the other way around. So we are here to you know, brainstorm, let Ghanaians know, let Africans know that this is what pertains in other parts of the world. How can we also put ourselves into it? I think that once we pass the real estate agency bill, we are looking at the airline now. We have to put all these structures in place to ensure that people get a maximum you know, support for the money they put into the real estate industry. So I think I'll commend Grepa for the work done. Um, Vicky, the convener, has been in this uh, project for more than 20 years. I've had the opportunity to attend the program outside the country in Chicago on two occasions. And now it's back home in Ghana within our own you know, confines. And it's, it's an African program. So I believe that um, the guest speakers here have a lot of experience, a lot of uh, uh, experience to share with uh, those of us back in Ghana. So I'm happy to be part of the conference. Yeah. Now, a major, major thing that we hear with the housing sector has to do with uh, the people in the diaspora thinking of investing here in the in the real estate sector. Uh, what does it mean going forward? Because we re already know that we have a major, major, major problem when it comes to the housing deficit. Well, as for the housing deficit, we've not really done any comprehensive research to even ascertain whether it's the 2 million that we are talking about, or it's still 1.7. Um, the recent housing and population census also has its own, um, giving us a rough figure. So plus 5 minus 5, so we still have a housing deficit. Um, it's the president's vision to roll out affordable houses across the country, especially in our rural communities as well. That is where, especially where the diaspora is coming, because you have a lot of people outside this country who wants to build or buy home or homes or houses for their families back home in their constituencies or in their districts. So once we have the structures laid down, it will be easier for them to tap into it. We are this time around to looking at the mortgage system where you can, you know, rent to also own a house in Ghana. So it's an opportunity for us to link up with the diaspora and also let them know some of the um, opportunities available to them for them to invest in Ghana as well. Because we have tax holidays, we have tax exemptions, we have so many tax reliefs, but people don't even know. So once you come around these, some of these conferences, we exchange ideas, we, we tell people what the ministry can facilitate for them when they want to come and invest in Ghana. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll link you up to GIPC, we'll, we'll talk about some of the tax exemptions and tax reliefs that is available to you as an investor from outside, even from within. So you will encourage people to continue coming to Ghana? Definitely, I will encourage people for, for coming to Ghana. One, we want to build up our foreign exchange. We want to open up to the outside world. We want to brainstorm. We want to link up. We want to bring other alternatives on board. You know, when you go to Europe or you go to the US, most of your buildings are done with what breaks in Europe especially. In America, it's wood, timber. 
what we have in Ghana. We have a lot of timber here. So why don't we also add value to what we have? But if you start building with wood in Ghana, people start talking like, who part this government is using wood to build? So we should... Well, absolutely, do lot of people who live in this country to be a chaos estate in the making. Exactly. So the dynamics may not be the same, but once you look around your environment, you tap into the resources you have, you add value to what you have and use it. Now we have a lot of clay deposits around. Can't we add value and start using bricks? Can't we even combine bricks and uh, brick and mortar? Can't we combine with other alternative um, prefab? Ghanaians are not used to prefab. So we have to do a lot of advocacy in that area. So Realtor in the US, it's well organized, it's well secured, safe. But back home in Ghana, we have a lot of work to do. So when we get opportunity to link up with some guests from the US and people like um, the convener, you tap into the knowledge, you tap into what they have and you fuse it together and see how best we can move our, uh, our built industry forward. Okay. So um, uh, finally, Honorable, um, Budum Brum, Saglemi, what can you say? I don't know. I can't speak much about Budumburam because um, there's still some, you know, back and forth on that issue. But recently, may yes, the case is in court now, so we can't talk too much about it. But what I want to assure Ghanaians is the fact that government is not looking unconcerned. Ghana uh, government is not, you know, sitting back with her hands folded behind us. We are making every effort, frantic effort, to make sure that we bring Saglime back to life. Some monies have been squandered. You cannot <laughs> face that one out. You know, of course, 200 million Ghana cities for 5,000 houses. Now you cannot even account for 600 houses. 200 million dollars already paid to the investor. 197 point something million. This is about 98.7 million dollars already gone. And now AESL and Ghana Surveyors um, Institute are also telling us that if you want to complete even the 600 at different levels of completion, then we need additional $32 million. If you want to complete the 5,000, you need additional $200 million to start with anyway. So the ministry at the time referred the case to the AGS department and uh, for advice, and they also advised that we send it to the CID. The CID did some investigations back to AGS department. The case is in court. So let's wait and see how it rules. Is this adding you to know that people are on the street sleeping, people don't have uh, decent homes, and yet these facilities are there? You know, sometimes we, we, when I hear people say that, it's, it baffles me. We are talking about three different issues here. We are talking about affordable housing. We are talking about, you know, niche homes. We are talking about social housing. Those people out there on the streets are not looking for affordable housing. They are looking for social housing. And uh, sadly, it's not a social housing is issue. I don't even see it as an affordable housing because if you calculate how much has been spent on sadly, it comes to more than, you know, uh, 70000 to $75,000 for the two-bedroom or three-bedroom apartment. So it's not affordable anymore. So let's, as a country, how do we put ourselves together and ensure that our people living out there on the streets, people in, living in the kiosks, we find some kind of social housing for them to live in. And that's what we are trying to work the talk now. So let, don't confuse the, the two. What is the talk? What is government doing in that regard? The government is doing a lot in that regard because... Um, you can, once you move them immediately, you should find a safe haven for them. And uh, you can't build a house, a prefab, in 24 hours. So you need to put a lot of process, a lot of work in place before you move on to the next, next level. I believe there's a lot of discussion going on. Uh, prefab houses? Apart from the prefab for the social housing. How can those even putting up the affordable housing or those putting up niche housing, how can they also plow back to support social housing? All this conversation is going on. Thank you very much, Ron.